When it comes to making your footage from Ecamm look the best it possibly can in Zoom, you have a lot of options. I recently discovered that you can use LUTs within Ecamm Live, and today I wanted to show you how to do that and also how to make your own custom LUT so that way you don't have to just borrow something else someone else is using. You can use something that's very unique to you and your specific setup. And if you're asking yourself what the LUT is a LUT, it's basically just sort of a preset. You can get very technical with them. You can use any LUTs that you want with Ecamm. So if you already have some or you've already made some, you can use those but it's really fun to learn how to make your own. So we're gonna be using Photoshop to do that. And basically it's just sort of a preset to help your colors look their best. This is what this shot looks like directly out of the camera. I'm using the Canon EOS R on a standard picture profile. So it doesn't look bad, it's super usable, but once I add my color correction to it in Final Cut Pro, this is what it looks like here. And I like this because it's so bright and vibrant. I like things that are bright and vibrant. And that's kind of where I lean towards my color grading. So then when I jump into a Zoom meeting and the Zoom meeting is dark and contrasty, it's sort of a bummer. So the fact that you can fix that in Ecamm is really awesome. The first part of this video is gonna be all about how to create your own custom LUT in Photoshop. And then the second part will be how to use it in Ecamm and then zoom through Ecamm. So feel free to use the chapter marker down at the bottom to skip to where you need to go and let's jump into it. Right now I am in Zoom and Ecamm. So we've got Ecamm on the left side of the screen, Zoom on the right. It's the same footage, but what you might notice is that the colors are slightly different. If we look at Zoom, the colors kind of have more contrast and are a little darker, whereas Ecamm, they're a little bit brighter and really more accurate to what's coming out of the camera. Now the first step towards creating a custom LUT is to get a single frame as a reference image that you can put into Photoshop. There are a few ways to do this. You can just record for a few seconds and then open up that clip and take a screenshot of it. But I really recommend that you put that footage into your editing software and then export a frame. So for example, I've got a clip in Final Cut Pro from a previous video that I made. And it doesn't really matter where you position the playhead, as long as the shot, the framing, the colors, the environment is what you wanna work with. Because if I had to spend a bunch of time trying to get a cool expression on my face in a video, that would just take forever. So it doesn't really matter what the frame is, as long as it's the location and the setting that you wanna use for your coloring. And then all you need to do is click the share button and save current frame. Now it's important to know that the save current frame option is not enabled by default. So if you don't have it, you just need to go into your Final Cut Pro preferences, click on destinations, and then you can add a destination and you can add a current frame. And when you do that, it will also let you select the type of file that you wanna save the frame as. And it's always a good idea for this specific use case to save it as a TIFF image. That's gonna make things easy as you go to create your own custom LUT. And now once you've done that and you click the share button, the save current frame option will be there. And now we're ready to hop into Photoshop. Once you've got your frame open in Photoshop, the first step is to turn it into a background layer, which all you need to do is click on layer at the very top, new, and then background from layer. You're gonna see the little lock show up on your image and it's gonna say background. That's gonna be really important just to make sure that things don't get messed up later on in the process. From there, you're basically just working with adjustment layers. So on top of your background, you can click adjustments and then you just, for lack of a better term, play with these until it looks the way that you want it to look. There are very technical ways to go about creating technically correct LUTs. And if you're familiar with color grading and image coloring and all that, this is the time to do that. If not, you can do what I kind of do, which is move things around until you like the way they look. So my goal with this image personally is to add in a bit of brightness and contrast and maybe a little bit of saturation. So I'm gonna start with levels and just play around till it looks the way that I want. This is not unlike the way that I would just edit a still image in Photoshop. Once you work on an adjustment layer there, it adds it above your background layer and you can click the little eye to turn it on and off to see your adjustments. You don't have to do every single one of these. You can go through and just work on the ones that you want. I start with levels. Curves is usually a good one to kind of adjust the exposure a little bit more. I am looking at my skin tone a little bit, but I'm really looking at the room around me and the, the vibrance and the color and that sort of stuff. I want my colors to be vibrant. 
and I'm gonna up the saturation a little bit. If you decide you don't want an adjustment layer, you can just click the trash can and delete it. Hue and saturation, that's usually a fun one. You can kind of play around a little more. Change my wall a little bit. Lean it towards more of like a teal rather than a purplish. Color balance can be important, especially if maybe the white balance isn't exactly what you want in the original shot. I always personally push things a little towards the cooler end of the spectrum, mostly just because I'm so cool. <laughs> I wouldn't want to be too hot. And like I said before, you don't have to go through every single adjustment layer. You can use maybe just one or two. If you want to use all of them, go for it. But here's our original image. And then as I start adding in my different adjustments, you can see how those all change. And if anything, I would actually recommend that you push your adjustments maybe a little further than you normally would, because once you've added the LUT in Ecamm, it's easy to then tone it down a little bit, but you can't like boost it. Once you're happy with the image, now you can save it as a LUT. The first step is to go to File, click on Export, and then do Color Lookup Tables. And that'll bring up this dialog window right here where you can give your LUT a name. I'm gonna call mine Tom Buck LUT. TIFF. And keep it at 64 grid points on high quality. For formats, I just use Cube. It works great with Ecamm. It also works with Final Cut Pro. So if you wanna start making your own LUTs for Final Cut, you could do that. So now on my desktop, I have a document that says tombucklut.tiff.cube, and that is my LUT that I am ready to use. And now in Ecamm, it is super easy to add the LUT. The first thing I think I can point, wait, boop. You just need to click this little magic wand right here, and that's going to bring up all of your image adjustment options, which is pretty cool because Ecamm has some built-in ones. You can play with the brightness, color temperature, tint. You can actually make some pretty decent adjustments Actually, I'm making things look quite terrible right now, but you can have a lot of control over your image without using a LUT or anything. I'm gonna reset this because that looks terrible. <laughs> so to add the LUT that you've just made or one that you already have, just click on select LUT and then there it is, Tom Buck LUT and open. And now, boom, the LUT is enabled in Ecamm and you can see the image looks a lot brighter. This little slider will allow you to adjust the intensity of your LUT. So if I slide it down, you're gonna go all the way back to zero, which would be the original image, or I can kind of like feather it in as much as I want if I want it to be subtle, or I can just max it out and have it look as intense as possible. And basically now, it almost looks like I'm working with color graded or color corrected footage in Ecamm Live, which is super cool. And there's a big difference there. The original footage looks fine, but for me, the LUT really makes things come alive and pop. And just as I mentioned in my Ecamm and Zoom video, the way that you use Ecamm with Zoom is to click on output, turn on virtual cam, and then Ecamm will be a selectable source within Zoom. So now with no LUT active, you can see the difference again in color. Ecamm looks a little more vibrant. Zoom looks a little more contrasty and darker. And once I add in that LUT, boop, they both brighten up. So again, this is one of those reasons why I recommend kind of going a little intense with your LUT if you know that you're gonna be using it with Zoom because it's easy to then back off and kind of get to the exact point that you want. But if you notice that you've maxed out your LUT and Zoom is still crushing your colors too much, you have nowhere else to go. On top of the LUT, then you can play with the brightness some more. I should mention though, right now I have my LUT on the desktop. If I were to move it into a folder and then reopen Ecamm, the LUT wouldn't be there anymore. So I'd have to re-add it from the new folder. So I just recommend every time that you open Ecamm before you start streaming, zooming, whatever, double check that your LUT is active and enabled. And I know that was a lot of information to throw at you. So if you wanna make things easier, I'll actually put a link down in the description where you can download the LUT that I made here for free and use it if you want. It may or may not work out well for you because it's based on my room, my studio, my preferences, but it's at least something to kind of play around with and get your feet wet in the world of LUTs. And if you want to know more about using Ecamm with Zoom, I did an entire video all about it. And I also made a video about my ridiculous, over the top, super unnecessary, but really fun Zoom setup. So you can go check those out. And all that's left to say, I guess, is good night and good LUT. <laughs>